If Natasha Lyonne had never hit rock bottom in her personal life, there would be no Russian doll. To bring the lead role of Nadia to life, the actress had to channel her own demons with the help of her BFF, Chloe Sevigny. It took almost dying for the actress to grow enough to write, direct, produce, and star in the award-winning show. Now Leon admits that it's difficult to tell where she ends and her character starts, but she wouldn't have it any other way. In many ways, I've never been happier. Leon didn't have an easy childhood, but the actress used this to her advantage. I think I'd probably be a pretty shitty writer if I had only been a child actor who segued gracefully into adulthood. The truth is, her journey was not just graceless, Natasha almost didn't make it to adulthood at all. Because her childhood was unconventional. The New York native made her acting debut at just six years old in Pee Wee's Playhouse. The show's happy, colorful sets gave the little girl a break from her depressing home life. Natasha's grandparents were Auschwitz survivors and raised their children to be fearless and strong. But there was a downside. Anything bad that happened in the family was compared to their experiences in the concentration camps. It was this mentality of no matter what sort of horrors life throws your way, that was something that had been endured by my grandmother and my grandfather. Nevertheless, with her newfound fame, Natasha found joy. After Pee Wee, she started to appear in films, landing her first big screen role in Dennis the Menace. But even though her career was taking off, things were not going well for her family. Natasha's dad was accused of tax evasion and dodgy financial dealings. To escape prosecution, he relocated his brood to Israel when his daughter was just eight. She continued acting, even appearing in a few Hebrew films. Sadly, her life off-screen was a different matter. After two years abroad, Natasha and her mom returned to America, without her dad. Her parents were getting a divorce, and Leon was starting at a new school where she was bullied. We all have our problems. It was too much for the preteen actress to handle, and it had a terrible effect on her self-esteem. As a kid, I spent more time than I'm proud of hating myself. Later, she also started to hate her absentee parents and the other kids in her school. To cope, she threw herself into acting. Eventually, even that was not enough to distract Natasha from her problems. At 16, her life changed forever. First, the actress landed the biggest role of her career in a Woody Allen film, Everyone Says I Love You. Then, she discovered drugs. Sort of a dysmorphic teenager, heroin chic. It quickly spiraled into addiction. Leon was kicked out of high school for selling drugs, and her plans to enroll in film school vanished. Instead, I became a drug addict, so it didn't pan out. The track record of child actors, statistically, does not go well. And I would say I definitely fell in that pile. The actress admits that she was her own worst enemy. Like, holy f like, I can't believe that was me. The rest of Leon's teenage years and her early 20s were defined by trouble. At 22, she was arrested for driving under the influence. Three years later, she was apprehended for harassment and trespassing. I wasn't, uh, you know, a criminal so much as a drug addict. You know, I was so into drugs. By 2005, Natasha hit rock bottom. She had no job, and her drug addiction was so bad she lived on the streets, where she contacted hepatitis C. Natasha's drug use had damaged her body so much that she was rushed to the hospital with a collapsed lung. Doctors were worried they would lose her, but after five months of treatment in intensive care, she was discharged. The legal system immediately intervened, and Natasha was sentenced to court-appointed rehab in 2006. But she owes her sobriety to more than just rehab. Natasha would not be clean today without the help of someone very special, fellow actress Chloe Sevigny. Chloe was instrumental to Natasha's recovery. The actress visited her friend in rehab and supported her. Most importantly, Chloe was the reason Natasha got her first job after being discharged by vouching for Leon's sobriety to a director. That helped the actress get back on her feet and make an acting comeback. Now Leon is proud to have survived her addiction, but she's also deeply ashamed of her behavior. It's weird to talk about. I was definitely as good as dead, you know. A lot of people don't come back. That makes me feel wary and self-conscious. But it has also been a kind of strange blessing. I'm like, you know, inspired to keep going. Natasha is also still paying for her past, though. It caused significant damage. The actress admitted that she occasionally still struggles with depressive thoughts. It all feels so high stakes and so broken sometimes. But in fact, it's like, I'm OK. Everything is OK. It's just not as heavy as it feels. Her physical health was also affected. In 2012, Leon learned that her drug use had badly damaged her heart, and she was forced to undergo open-heart surgery to fix it. 
The scar from that operation, along with her experience as a heroin addict, actually helped Natasha with her acting comeback. Because in 2013, she was cast as Nikki Nichols in Orange is the New Black, a heroin addict who undergoes heart surgery. This isn't the first time the actress has used her own past for her career. Her life very seriously informs her work and has since the start of her career. Before Orange is the New Black, Natasha played a queer character in the hit film But I'm a Cheerleader. Both roles were incredibly important to the New York native as they channeled her own sense of identity. I take great pride in having the appreciation of the LGBTQI community. I wonder if my queerness is actually that I just sort of identify as male in a way. The same is true of her part in Russian Doll. Natasha relied heavily on her own experiences of life and New York for the show. That included her addiction. Those are the same years I spent developing something to say. My family story, my years through the ringer of being at death's door and addiction. Having such a specific experience enabled me to have a specific point of view. The former addict is now trying to get others to embrace their own stories too even if they're nightmares, because she sees truth as a superpower and creative soul food. Boy, would I love to see a world in which we all spoke more freely about the truth of who we are. But she also has another important message, that no matter how badly you mess up in life, a comeback is possible. Adulthood is making peace with being kind to oneself when a response to life that's so much more organic and immediate would be to self-destruct. Natasha Lyonne may have made the mistake of following the dangerous road that snares most former child stars, but she came out stronger and taught us that mistakes don't need to define you. So now all you need to do is decide what will define you. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, stay awesome.